Our lecture today is about swallowing, which is considered as a highly complicated process because the fact that the pharynx is um, uh, serve two function, the respiration and swallowing. And during uh, swallowing, there is a simultaneous activity of a number of structures which occur within a few seconds in order to pass the food particle from the pharynx to the esophagus without affecting the respiration and without uh, passage of the food particle in the upper or lower uh, airway tract. The swallowing can be divided into three stages. First stage, which is the oral stage, is a voluntary stage, while the two other stage is involuntary. We will start with the first stage, which is the oral voluntary stage, and the main actor of this stage is the tongue, which will squeeze the food particle against the hard palate in upward and backward direction, so the pulse of the food is forced to be in the pharynx, and once it becomes in the pharynx, this the process becomes uh, automatic and invol involuntary and cannot be stopped. The second stage is called the pharyngeal stage. And during this stage, presence of the pulse of the food in the posterior mouth and in the pharynx will stimulate the receptor present in this region, uh, and especially in the tonsillar pillar, and the uh, impulse uh, initiated will be uh, transferred to the brain stem, which in turn will uh, cause a series of automatic pharyngeal muscle contraction and as uh, follow. The first movement is, um, is the uh, upward uh, uh, movement of the soft palate uh, to, in order to close the posterior nares. So this will uh, prevent the reflex of the bolus of the food into the nasal cavities. The palatopharyngeal fold on each side are bold immediately in order to form a sagittal uh, sledge which uh, guide the uh, passage of the food into the posterior pharynx. The vocal cord of the larynx are strongly approximated and the larynx uh, is pulled upward uh, and anteriorly by the neck muscle and this action causes the epiglottis to swing backward over the larynx uh, opening and uh, all this action is to prevent the passage of the food into the trachea. This is another illustration which uh, clarifies the movement of the epiglottis, the, back, uh, the backward swing of the epiglottis over the uh, over the opening of the larynx, so the uh, food uh, can only pass into the esophagus. At the same time, uh, the upward movement of the larynx stretch the uh, uh, opening of the uh, of the esophagus, which is called the upper esophageal sphincter. So this uh, stretch causes relaxation of the sphincter and the bolus of the food pass easily and freely from the posterior pharynx to the esophagus. Normally, we should know that uh, this uh, sphincter between uh, swallowing is uh, strongly uh, contracted uh, and this contraction is mediated by the vagus nerve in order uh, to prevent the passage of the ear uh, into the esophagus during respiration. At the same time of uh, upward movement of the larynx and uh, the relaxation of the upper esophageal sphincter, the constrictor muscle of the pharynx contract, giving rise to a peristaltic wave, which, uh, which force the bolus of the food to pass into the esophagus. To, su uh, to summarize the mechanic of the pharyngeal stage of swallowing, the trachea is closed, the esophagus is opened, and there is a peristaltic wave which forces the bolus of the food into the uh, esophagus. All these events occur in less, th in less than 2 seconds. The third stage is called the esophageal stage, and this stage is began with the uh, relaxation of the esophageal sphincter, and after the passage of the bolus of the food, this sphincter will be reclosed, and with the opening of the uh, glottis and the breathing return. 
The, then the movement of the bolus of the food uh, from the esophagus to the stomach is an active process. It's not dependent on the gravity and um, it is mediated by a progressive wave of muscle contraction which is known as peristaltic wave. There, is, um, there are uh, two types of uh, peristalsis. Pre primary peristaltic wave which is a continuation of the peristaltic wave that began uh, already in the pharynx which passed all the way from the pharynx to the stomach uh, through the esophagus. This wave uh, is, uh, is initiated by the vagal reflex and is called vagal-vagal reflex which means that the efferent fiber is passed through the vagus to the medulla and also the efferent fiber is passed through the uh, vagus nerve. Then, after the primary, uh, primary, uh, after the passage of the primary bristaltic wave, if uh, uh, if a certain part of the food is felt to pass into the stomach, this causes distension of the esophageal wall, and this will generate a secondary bristaltic wave, which uh, generated by the enteric nervous system, uh, in order to pass this retained uh, food into the stomach. The final step of the esophageal phase is uh, the relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter in order to permit uh, the passage of the bolus of the food into the stomach. Normally, this sphincter is tonically contracted uh, due to the activity of the vagus nerve and uh, this uh, contraction is to, uh, to protect the, the esophagus from the reflux passage of, uh, of the acidic content of the stomach into the esophagus and the other factor that protect the esophagus from this acidic content of the stomach is the oblique entrance of the esophagus into the stomach which act like a valve-like mechanism.